Hello everybody and welcome back to Crusader Kings 2, a Game of Thrones and back to our House Longspear playthrough. Now last time in the last episode, if you haven't watched it, quite a lot happened. We are now playing as Lord Orain Longspear. After the tragedy that befell our father, we tried to go to war to take Duskendale and Hollard Hall, but unfortunately uh, the king at the moment, I think it's still... Oh, it's Robert Baratheon, of course. Uh, no, it's Stannis. See, it's been a while since I've played this save. Stannis Baratheon. Uh, imprisoned our father and executed him very quickly. He didn't give him a trial or anything. He just hanged him straight there. So we have now taken command of these lands. We are only five years old, unfortunately. So it's going to be a long kind of slog to the end now. We have to try and get to the age where we can rule as quickly as possible because I'm pretty sure our region will give away some of our land. Uh, Pera Arryn of Gultown. But hopefully we can still make something of this. We're still going to aim for our ambition, which is to take Duskendale, the High Lordship, for ourselves. I think we still have we have a claim on Hollard Hall, not on Duskendale, unfortunately. Oh no, wait. We what? What? Oh, I remember. Okay, yeah. See, I'm getting so confused. We are actually High Lordship of Duskendale. We are High Lord of that now. So it's just Hollard Hall we need to take because it is currently owned by Lord Jeremy Riker, who has a claim on the High Lordship as well. So if we can take him out, that would be very useful. But we're not going to do that yet because we need our troops to rebuild slightly. But yeah, I forgot we taken Duskendale. Sorry about that. I I completely forgot. Uh, so we are... Or are we still just Lord of Dusting it there? Okay, we don't actually have... Oh, no, we are High Lord. Okay. This is so confusing. It's been a while since I've played this game. I do apologise. Uh, we'll set it playing, though. We'll get straight on with it. Actually, I shouldn't. I need to set my council, because after my father died, uh, my council gets reset, so I need to make sure everyone's back in place. Goodwin Trant will be our Master at Arms. 23 Marshal. Very good indeed. Uh, our Treasurer shall be Kedge. Excellent name. Uh, not the best, but he's the best we've got. Uh, Tainer Hutchinson will be our spy master, Mace de Florian, and Septon Roderick. So we'll get them all doing the usual task, performing charity in Duskendale, uh, collecting ta ta uh, taxes in Duskendale, building a spy network in Holland Hall, uh, training troops in Duskendale. Uh, we need to think about where to move next. We'll set our Castellan to, or Senchal, to be in Duskendale as well, uh, getting more taxes for, from them. Uh, we need to decide, though, whether to attack Rosby. I'm, I'm, I'm planning ahead here, I know I am, but the whole point was to try and take as many um, as many High Lordships as we can to slowly build our own kingdom. So it's just a question of whether we go for North Cracklaw Point, or we go for Rosby, or we go for Rayonet. If we have a look at the High Lordships around us, we've got Rosby here. Pretty powerful, to be honest. I believe it's owned by, yeah, the Rosbys. I, I thought it was. Um, they've got a couple of vassals there as well, so they're going to be quite powerful. He currently has 3,000 men, we only have 2,000, but of course we do need to wait for some troops to rebuild or train back up. So Rosby is a possibility. The other possibility, and the probably one I'm going to go for, is North Cracklaw Point up here. Uh, it controls all of these regions here, from Cracklaw Point to Rook's Rest. So it's a decent amount of land, good amount of troops, and it kind of keeps us away from King's Landing at the moment, because obviously Stannis killed our father, so he's obviously not suffering fools lightly, so... I think maybe going north, further north, or northeast specifically, might be useful. And it gets us closer to our sort of secondary objective, which is to take Dragonstone. Because if you can take Dragonstone, things do become quite interesting, because it is a lot easier to get dragons, which possibly something for the future. I'm, I'm, I'm thinking way ahead at the moment, but I think we're going for Cracklaw points. We'll see if we can get a claim on the High Lordship straight away. Um, if not, we'll have to get claims on all the different areas, and then distribute them to our vassals. We also need to give someone the title of commander. Who's our best commander? Uh, Cavern Hook. He'll be our commander. Is there anyone better than Elwood Hart? No. Okay, we need some better commanders in the future, but that's not an issue right now. Right, now we'll set it playing this time. Uh, we do have some prisoners, apparently, which we can ransom. Uh, oh, only two. Uh, we'll see if we can ransom them for amount of gold. Well, there's a red priest as well. Uh, so we're holding a funeral for my father. We will spend lavishly on food to show our glory. Um, so Rickard Silverax has left our court and has gone to serve King Stannis. So we need another... Oh, another spymaster, it looks like, actually. Um, oh, no, he was our... I'm so confused. Oh, no, he was our commander. I don't know why we needed a new spymaster suddenly, unless she just left. So we'll have her in Hollowed Hall again. Uh, so we need a commander and a sworn shield. We really need better commanders eventually. Uh, we need a bodyguard as well. We'll just give it to Jonas for now. Uh, my prisoner, Maester Leslin, is complaining about his dark cell. Uh, we shall be merciful. In fact, if they're both... We've got a red priest. We'll just let them go. They're not dangerous in any way. They're just religious people. Um, 
the conjurer produced a rabbit from a hat that made a handkerchief change colour from brown to red and then simply vanished from the room, only to knock on the door and open it a few seconds later. Uh, you have to perform my feast, definitely. Uh, so they've all arrived for the funeral. I mean, it is a big shame that we didn't manage to play as Xander Longspear for longer. He was a very interesting character. He committed much gold to this extravagant feast, and particularly the guests were impressed with the large centrepiece on the day's table. It represented a green lawn surrounded with large peacock feathers and green branches, to which retired violets and other sweet-smelling flowers. In the middle of this, a fortress was placed, covered with silver. The fortress was hollow and formed a sort of cage, in which several live birds were shut up, with their tufts and feet being gilt. On its tower, which was gilt, the banners of House Longspear were placed. We went all out on this feast, apparently, for his funeral. Uh, and so it is done. We gained some piety from that, which is nice. Um, I am just concerned at the moment that our region may try and give out some of our land. If they don't, we'll be fine. But if if they do, we'll have to maybe take it back so we can eventually give it to our uh, descendants after that. Our heir at the moment, we do have a sister, of course, Melora Longspear, who is married to Lord Loris of the Reach. And we have Rella Longspear as well, who isn't married, so we may need to look match legally. Uh, Lord Guns from Rosby is trying to usurp my title as Master of Laws. Lord Edison of Edgerton is supposedly travelling around Rosby, trying to find both documents and supporters to help him legitimise a claim on the title. So we can make him disappear for 10 piety, uh, bribe him for 50 gold, or let it be for now. We're going to try and make him disappear. I'd rather lose piety than gold at this point. Uh, and they were successful. Okay, so his Master of Laws is now dead. Also, he was Lord of Edgerton, which is... Interesting. Um, I'll go back to Realm's view. So his father was it his father? Oh, it was his brother? Fair enough. Uh, we do all we can press a claim on him as well as a du jour claim, so he'll be under our lordship. But I kind of want to get rid of him, get the Rikers out of my lands. He's a kinslayer and dishonourable. Was he? Did he? I oh, know his father was murdered by me. I forgot about that. But he obviously killed someone of his kin, which is interesting. Um. So yeah, we're basically just at the moment in one of those annoying episodes where we're waiting for a child to grow up, which isn't the most fun to watch. We'll try and keep things interesting. We also have Cavern Cup, who was being educated by my father, uh, turning out into a decent character, but I, don't think he, I was kind of hoping he was going to be a good bodyguard in the future. Uh, let's see if we can build anything in Duskendale. We could build a castle town to try and get some more tax income, but I kind of want to get some more troops if I can. So we'll build a militia training ground in Duskendale. Maybe one in Brindlewood as well. It's a lot of gold, but it does mean we'll have a couple of extra troops. And in this game, you know, any amount of troops helps. Uh, and now we're kind of waiting. I mean, we can... Uh, it's come to my attention that Justice Seer of Harrenhal, Lord Tristan of Willow Wood, has bribed and threatened his way through, through my domain, trying to get enough people to recognise a claim. So, what claim does she get? So she has a claim on Birch Hall. Not sure why you'd want Birch Hall, but fair enough. Okay, so I need a tutor. Uh, and I've gained the Slothful Trail. I'm sorry, I didn't read that. I kind of clicked very quickly. Uh, what training is she going to give me? Um, I Stewardship education. Great, thanks. Really what I wanted. We'll spend the best so we can try and be uh, something decent. But we're going to have to find a good tutor in terms of stewardship. I was hoping they were going to pick command. We'll see if the king has any good stewards. Uh, there I am. Any, uh, not particularly. What about someone with good learning? There is Lady Felice. Uh, this isn't looking great. I kind of wanted something a bit better than that. We'll look all over the kingdom and see if there's anyone who's really good with money and also decent learning as well. Uh, Prince Duran, that'd be an interesting one. 21 stewardship, 27 intrigue, and 18 learning. It is going to affect my culture, but I think he's probably the best option at the moment, if he'll accept it. We'll see if he will. I mean, it's also Prince Duran who is a potential one. Uh, ooh, Oberyn. You know what? Let's be trained by Oberyn the Red Viper. Oberyn Martell is going to educate me. At least for the first few years, I may look for another tutor at some point. Uh, oh, did he not accept it? I don't think he accepted it. Oh, that's annoying. Uh, is there anyone in my lands that could be a decent educator? Uh, my spy master has decent stewardship and good learning and decent... We'll go with her for now. You know, keep in my lands a bit more. Try and make sure my culture stays the same. I mean, we can attack Hallowed Hall basically when we want. It's just a question of whether the king is going to try and 
block it again, which would be very annoying, especially as my heir is actually married to a Tyrell, so children will be of his dynasty, not ours. So we do have to be careful about that. I think we'll wait a little bit longer, maybe until we're married. We are betrothed to a genius, which would be useful if that could pass on to our children. It is annoying we are slothful, because that really affects our skills. Uh, Lord Simon of Rook's Rest now is trying to take some of our land. We'll try and make him disappear as well. Everyone wants Duskendale, apparently. Maybe this wasn't the best place to start this game, considering how everyone wants it. Um, but we're just going to let our kind of kingdom build back up, because we have had a lot of war. So if you look at Duskendale, hardly any men there. We could have 2,000 men from there, so we'll let them build up slowly. Um, and then have quite a large army with which to move out from. But yeah, if we could take Crackle Point, that would be really useful. I'm going to speed the game up slightly so we can try and get through this stage quickly. Um, try and... Ah, there we go. So we already have a claim on the Lordship. Okay, so just the Lordship, not the High Lordship. We'll let it go for now and actually move kind of upwards. So we'll try and get a claim on Rook's Rest first and move up from there. I mean, ideally we want to claim on all of them before we attack so we can take all of them in one go. But that is going to take quite a long time to do, unfortunately. Don't know why the camera jumped over there. Uh, Paramount Eddard Stark is holding a melee and his fight says, we'll go to, uh, to the melee, spend some time there, see if there's anything interesting going on, any good warriors. Uh, speaking of which, it's actually, I'm recording this on the Monday, this is coming out on the Tuesday, uh, Monday the 17th, so it's actually Game of Thrones Day, the season is back. I watched the episode and I'm not going to spoil anything, but it is very good and I'm really glad it's back, so this kind of in inspired me to sort of uh, give it a go. Uh, to get back to recording this. It's been a while since I recorded these. I tend to record in quite big blocks of maybe like three or four episodes at a time and then work from there. But it's been a while since I've played, so me getting confused at the start is because I think it's been about two or three weeks since I've played this save particularly. I also took a week off recording stuff um, just as a little break. So yeah, it's been a while since I've played this game particularly. So if it looks like I don't know what I'm doing, it's because I, I kind of forgot everything, <laughs> basically, is my excuse. I am actually going to make Duskendale my capital, um, because it should be the capital anyway, so it just sorts that out. Um, Goodwin Trant wants a reward, of course we'll reward him, he is a very good marshal. 23 marshal skill for a place our size is very good indeed. Inquisitive, curious and friendly, I always am the first to greet strangers. So we've gained the gregarious trait, that gives us better diplomacy, better attraction, Vassals like us more, and people who are also gregarious like us more as well, so that's a decent trait to have. How many men does he have on Hollard Hall? He's about a thousand men, uh, two thousand men in Hollard Hall, so we're going to have to wait for Duskendale to almost fully reinforce, and then uh, Brindlewood, Berthold, and Antlers will need to kind of form their armies to try and block them. We will have them basically surrounded unless they try and go all the way around. Our charity work in Duskendale is going well, so we gain some more piety, which is nice. Rowell Longspear is now of legal age. We need to get her married. Um, oh, there's a Prince of the uh, Iron Throne there. Oh, is he heir to... Oh, he is. He is heir to the to the kingdom. I, I mean, sensibly, I should do a match legal marriage, but when you get a chance to marry a future king, you don't turn that down. That's going to give us a nice prestige bonus. Uh, so, yeah, he is the heir. I mean, we can't kill Stannis, obviously, because we're only six years old. Seven years old, actually. Slowly getting through the years, so yeah, maybe not the best match in terms of actual gameplay, but I think that's quite an interesting match to see uh, our sister sat on the Iron Throne eventually as queen. Hopefully, unless something goes horribly wrong. But yeah, maybe I could have done with a couple more allies, but honestly, at this point, I think we have enough men to fight the battles we have without having too much concern. It's not like we need to call in re reinforcements from anywhere. I think we're safe at the moment. It's just about getting to that magical 16 years old where we can start making decisions. Start kind of basically actually ruling instead of having our region do it all for us. That'd be, that'd be a nice thing to be able to do. And hopefully by the time we've got at least a couple of claims up in Crackler Point, if not all of them. Although he's being a bit slow on Rook's Rest. I think I'm going to change it to from spying on them to actually sabotaging the economy of Holland Hall. Try and lower their income where we can so they can't buy any mercenaries or anything like that. And those buildings are done in the militia training ground, so we do have a couple of extra troops again. Uh, which is nice, they have eight, nearly 900 men. 
Antlers has about the same, although it's not actually reinforced yet. And Birchall has a few less. You're fed up with always losing games to the other children. You're faster and cleverer than they are, but whenever you find a way to win, they make up a new rule against it. And when you don't play on teams, your, your team always drags you down. I won't let them hold me back anymore. Did I gain a trait from that? Oh, okay, maybe she stopped me from gaining a trait. Uh, we're developing fairly well at the moment. I mean, we are still very young, of course. The only problem with, with our education at the moment is we're not going to learn any sword skills, which is a bit of a shame. But we have five learning already, two stewardship and two diplomacy, and we're only eight years old, so that's definitely going to improve. And she does have some very good traits there. Ambitious, authoritative, just, and patient. All those would be good to have. Um, just hoping we can keep developing nicely. I mean, having the slothful trait, as I said, is really annoying, but we'll have to stick with it. Goodwin Trent wants to be regent, apparently. Well, I can't really do anything about it, because I can't change my region while I'm under a regency. He's not actually married. I'll marry him to uh, Denise Bolling, I guess, just so he can possibly have some children. Keep the family as loyal servants to us, as I like to do on this game. So yeah, this is one of those awkward episodes where we're just kind of waiting around for me to finally get of age where we can start to make decisions. So, I do apologise if this isn't... Ap do apologising? No, do apologise even that this isn't the most exciting or dynamic episode there is, but it's important to kind of get our characters set up right, and we're not doing too well, we're not doing too badly either. We may eventually look for... Maybe when we reach sort of 12 or 13, we might look for someone who's very good at fighting to hopefully train us up a little bit. Maybe get a knighthood as well, if we can. That would be useful. The Drowned God Uprising. Where is he uprising from? Ah, he's just attacking the Iron Isles. That should be sorted fairly quickly. Uh, our treasurer writes with us with bad news from Duskendale. My efforts to squeeze some extra taxes out of the population have met with resistance, and the peasants are arming themselves. Ah, so the revolt risk has gone up, which is a bit annoying, but we should be fine. These are the people I grew up with. I feel we bonded over the years. Who do we bond with? No one. Okay. <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, don't know what that was about. Well, there aren't actually that many kids, I don't think, in my court. So, not many friends for me to make, really. Fortunately. Um, so, yeah, we're kind of... We're, ooh, he's been arrested by King Stannis. Interesting. Who's his heir? Okay, he has a couple of children, so it's not like he's going to pass on to us, unfortunately. And I'm guessing I can't declare war while he's in prison. I mean, we could, but I don't know if Stannis will then be unhappy with us for declaring war, and I don't really want to risk it when I don't have, uh, you know, an heir to carry on the name. So unfortunately, we are going to have to wait until we can attack Hollard Hall. We shouldn't have to wait too long, though. It's not going to be, you know, years and years. It should just be probably until we're about of age that we should be able to attack Hollard Hall. Um, in fact, I may change my tutor now, because we're not developing that well. Um, let's have a look who's in the Kingsguard. The King Kingsguard usually have the best fighters. There is Jonas of Gull Hall. Um, very good fighter overall. Formidable fighter, in fact. Do you have anyone else in his court that would be good? Arthur, da oh, Arthur Danes. Uh, on a quest, of course. So we haven't, they haven't actually found Arthur Dane, Gerald Hightower, or Lyanna Stark, interestingly enough. Um, let's just get my... There I am. Let's see who is... Is anyone who's a decent steward? Probably not. Uh, what about learning? They do have a maester who's pretty good, or... Actually, he's got eight learning and then... Very well... In fact, we'll go with him. We'll go with the Lord Commander of the Night's Watch. He's got very well-rounded skills, but he's also a very good fighter. So he's accepted that. We may become a Veilman, unfortunately, but... I think we've, we've waited long enough... See, straight away we've gained a poor fighter, and that's with a couple of days of tutorship. So hopefully we are going to become quite a good fighter in the future, as well as some good skills. He's taking me as his squire as well, which is nice. Because even though we might not be the best fighter, if we can be knighted, that always helps our reputation. And I believe it increases our piety. I might be making that one up, but I think there's something about increasing piety in it. But we'll have to wait and see. Antler's still not reinforcing, which is really annoying. They obviously have quite a big garrison, it's not reinforcing very quickly. Birchall is at full reinforcements, but Antler's is letting us down at the moment. So we are going to have to wait for Duskendale to fully reinforce. 3,000 men now, nearly 4,000 men. 
And that's the impact that Good Marshal has. He's given us about 2,000 extra troops there, or nearly 2,000 extra troops. Uh, so, very useful to have a very good Marshal at your court, because we are going to be able to smash uh, some of these other armies. Master Tymon, unfortunately, has died of... Uh, he died bedridden and infirm, so we need a new Castellan. Uh, Morgan Buckwell seems to be our best that we haven't got already, so we'll put him in Duskendale again. And he was also a commander. Oh no, I think uh, the guy I just put in charge was the commander. We do have the Red Priest of Dusk. Uh, yeah, Red Priest of Duskendale. Um, I don't really want him as a commander. I'll have Mr. Allen. Oh, of course, that's where he came from because. Um, yeah, the previous ruler of Duskendale. Uh, I can't quite remember his name. Yeah, Renfred actually converted to Roller, so that's why there's a red priest. Ah, I get it now. Okay, so we do have a claim on Rook's Rest now. That's all that was saying. So we're going to move our just to see it onto Crack Lord Baron. That's the one. Yeah, so we can sort of, as you can see, we can kind of start to work our way up. So we can take Rook's Rest and Crack Lord Baron, move our way up all the way through Crack Lord Point until we have claims on most of them at least, or hopefully all of them by the time we're ready to go to war with them. Of course, there is always the risk that the Stannis will try and stop us, but uh, hopefully not. Hopefully he'll be alright with us by then. Or maybe he'll die and his son will take charge and he'll have my daughter, on the th uh, my sister even, on the throne as the queen. That'd be interesting. She is actually pregnant as well, so carrying on the Baratheon line for them. So I'm hoping that kind of increases relations between me and either Stannis or Stefan, whoever is on the throne, when we come of age. Only a couple more years to wait as well, which is nice. Uh, we do need another commander and another sworn shield. I guess maybe one of them died. Uh, we'll have Ryan and... who's our best bodyguard? Okay, there's a couple actually. Uh, four, 5.5, 5, so we'll put uh, Willem Halton as our bodyguard. It's been hundreds of years since the clansmen have threatened the Vale with anything more serious than raids. However, word has spread of a king who has united the clans and assembled a large band of warriors, intent on taking the fertile lands of the Vale for themselves. So King Gunther of the Mountain Clans is fighting for the Vale, interestingly enough. Of course, we do mention the Mountain Clans in the series, Tyrion meets some of them, but they're not such a big deal in the series. I believe they are mentioned a bit more in the books, but on this game they do tend to try and take the Vale if they can. I have seen them actually successful before as well. Um, so our heir now is Prince Crescent, apparently. What happened to my sister? I thought she was in line. Apparently not. Fair enough. Um, not quite sure why that changed. But they have had a son, which is nice. Prince Crescent of the Iron Throne, my nephew. Very weird to have a nephew when you're only 10, 11 years old. But oh well. So, we are 11 years old. Our betrothed wife is 12 years old, so very soon we'll be able to get married and hopefully have an heir pretty quickly. Because uh, we're going to need one before we really press on and claim any any more land, basically. Because I don't want to risk taking lots of land and then losing it immediately. So if we can have a son or a couple of sons to you know, take High Lord... So say if we have, like, Hollard Hall or Duskendale and North Cracklow Point. If I have a couple of sons, I can kind of spread it between them. Uh, well, not exactly. I can't quite do that because I'll lose that land. But if we can kind of give some of these little bits of land to them and, and sort of start to build a dynasty here that controls all of this for themselves rather than having lots of different vassals. So at the moment, we control all of this land. So say if we had a son, I could give him Rindlewood, Antlers and Birch Hall. Keep Duskendale for myself. Maybe even give them Hollard Hall as well and kind of build out that way. So everyone under me is still you know, of my dynasty. It's not like I'm spreading my land to random people. I think I'm going to play this episode until we're 14 and married, and then next episode we'll carry on from there and, and kind of wait a couple of years until we're able to rule and then maybe take Hollard Hall. I think that's a good way to do it. I don't want to make this episode too long, but I feel like it will go on a bit longer than usual. I do apologise if, if this has been a little bit, I don't know, messy, I guess, if I've not quite sounded like I know what I'm doing. It has been a while since I've recorded anything, so please do you know, forgive me, and I will try and make things <laughs> better in the future, basically. But, yeah, just this is the first video I've recorded for a while. So, yeah, I hope it's still being enjoyable, basically, is what I'm trying to say. And we are just waiting and waiting. We have become a trained fighter as well, which is nice. So we have a fairly decent dual skill, actually. Plus four for a 12-year-old is not bad at all. Hopefully we can maybe get a skilled fighter. 
as well. None of our other stats are quite developing as I'd like. We do have six martial, which is pretty good. Again, could be better. But, you know, th this is kind of the problem with this game. I was quite annoyed last time when Xander Longspear died. Oh, great. I don't like climbing trees, I'm afraid of spiders, and I won't get ne go near the graveyard. Does that make me a craven? Ah, excellent. Okay, so my mentor stopped me from being a craven. Because Xander Longspear was such a good marshal and good character, I was kind of hoping we could build on that and have kind of a long dynasty of, of superior warriors, basically. Fortunately, he died very quickly, and that kind of annoyed me a little bit, but I'm still happy with how things are going. I am still looking forward to the rest of this series. Ooh, some disease in the whispers. Uh, oh, great sickness. Oh dear, that could pass. That could be bad. We have to keep an eye on that, because if that starts to spread to the lands around... Potentially... Okay, it stopped. Okay, that was weird. Uh, we are unwell, though. I'm not quite sure why. Don't think it's anything serious. We should be fine. I hope. Apparently winter is coming, but we already knew that. So our marshal is letting us know that we have more reinforcements, which is nice. We have up to we have two thousand men already in Duskendale, which is more than enough to take Hollard Hall when we wish. But we're just going to wait a little bit longer, so it's a quite an easy one. Money's been disappearing from the treasury. I suspect my regent Pera, but there is no proof. My mother might be stealing from me. That's not very good. But hopefully, once we come of age, that will stop. Uh, a couple of people in prison. I'm not going to do that. We're just a couple of years away now. The High, high Septon has died, unfortunately, so they need to get a new one. In fact, I might play till we're 16, because we are rushing through these quite quickly. Um, so maybe playing until we're 16, and the next episode we can kick straight off with kind of kicking some butt, trying to do some things, trying to take Hollard Hall, and then move on up to North Crackler Point. In fact, yeah, I'll do that. We'll play till we're 16, and we're fully grown and able to start to rule for ourselves. I feel that's going to work out better than kind of picking up and dropping it. There is still a big war going on against the Drowned God Uprising. It looks like they haven't... Yeah, they, they haven't sailed over to end that yet, so it's taking a while. We've got some big armies roaming around, unfortunately. So here's our little bit of land. I, I don't zoom in that often. Let's have a look at it in terrain view. Isn't that nice? Lots of hills, lots of trees. Nice coastline here. I don't know, I'm just trying to think of things to talk about. Uh, you have great fun provoking people with rude remarks. Let's see what Jonas says about this. Uh, he doesn't mind, apparently. Okay, great. We have not turned out very well, it's fair to say. We are rude, slothful, we are gregarious, uh, and that's it. Okay, so we've really not turned out as well as I was hoping, but we'll stick with it. Well, we don't have a choice, we can't stop. So, yeah, we're going to have to try and press that claim on Hollow Hall very soon, so we have all the land for ourselves. Should just be a couple of days now, and we'll be old enough to get married, though, which would be nice. We're no longer ill, which is good. So we do have quite a nice stockpile of gold as well, which is always nice to have. So we can start to build up quite quickly once we're of age. So I think we're now... Are we now 14? Yeah, we're 14. She's 15, so why can't we... Okay, there we go. Uh, so we'll get that marriage going. We are going to lose some prestige from it, but I don't really care at this point. I just hope that genius trait passes on. We can even get some more gold from it. Uh, she it gives us 10 gold, which isn't a huge amount, but it'll do. She needs a tutor. Uh, she's got very good stewardship, actually, so we'll find our best steward to just finish her education, basically. Our spy master is our best steward, apparently, which is a bit worrying. But there we are. We are now married, which is good. We can hopefully have an heir at some point. We're going to have our ambition to have a son as soon as possible. Not sure if she has an ambition at all. No, not yet. So yeah, that's kind of one thing ticked away. We now need to have an heir and then take Hollard Hall. And that's kind of the checklist of, of things that we need to do. That sentence made no sense. What am I even talking about? It's warm and it's t I'm tired. So, ah, it's been a while. It's been a while. It's been a long time. Are there any factions we can join, actually? Uh, there are. Well, we can't join the Reacts, we're too young, but we could join the Crown Loyalists. Try and get him to like us a bit more. Show our loyalty to him. Uh, but we'll take Hollard Hall first, so we're kind of a more powerful Lord then with a High Lordship complete. Still 14, a couple of years left to go. 
uh, and then we'll stop the video there, and next, next episode we will start to work through our ambitions of taking Hollard Hall, taking North Park Law Point. I know I've said that about eight times now, but I just want to make sure I'm clear in my own head of what we're working towards. We can actually get some more troops if we want. I climb the highest trees, visit the graveyard at midnight, and collect spiders and snakes. We've gained the Brave trait. That's more like it. That's a complete turnaround for what we were before. So that gives us more martial and better dual skill as well, which is excellent. Just in case we ever need it. Um, I'm wondering if we want to build a castle town in Dusk. In fact, we're going to do it. Try and get some more tax income every month. That would be nice. Slowly build up our own bits of land, because this is going to hopefully be the start of a new kingdom. Eventually. So it's good to have it kind of built up well and ready to go and support. So we are now 15, so we don't have a portrait. There we are. Looking pretty standard, it's fair to say. So our wife has now technically arrived in our court. She's 16. Uh, decent stats overall. Apparently we need a guardian now. I'm not quite sure why. Uh, we'll get our best marshal on it. Goodwin Trant. Hopefully he can get us to be a good commander or something. I don't know. I know we were giving us to education, but I don't feel like I needed that. I feel like I needed more uh, martial skill. So we're just going to wait a couple more months and then we'll be ready to stop and go. Stop and go. That's not the expression I meant. Oh well, I said it now. I've said all sorts of random things that make no sense, so I might as well carry on the trend, you know? There's no point stopping now while I'm ahead. It's come to my attention that just to see of Rosby, Alan Manning, has bribed and threatened his way through my domain trying to get enough people to recognise a claim on the title. So, Gunnar Rosby now has a title on the High Lordship of Duskendale. Ah, that's a problem. So, Rosby, which is here, right below us, he's managed to uh, fabricate a claim on my lands. That could be an issue in the future. My Septon wants a reward. I'll give him some money for it. So, we may need to switch targets now and actually try and take Rosby out before they take us out. Annoyingly, but we'll stick with it for now. We'll try and get as many claims up in the north as we can because, in the end, if we take all of this, we have a lot of men to come down on Rosby with. So, it's kind of deciding whether we fight in the north to get more men or fight against Rosby to take out an enemy. Castletown's been done, so that's nice. While playing with the other children, you seem to favour yourself over the other children. Uh, he's expressed that everyone is equal, which should be nice. Over the past 10 years, I've been shown the magic of numbers. I see the realm in a totally different way now. What did we get? We are an incompetent steward. Yay. Ah, great. <laughs> that, that wasn't quite what I was expecting or hoping for. So a couple more days, I think. Word has reached you that your septant, Roderick, has given into weakness and helped himself to arms. He was meant to distribute amongst the poor. The poor? The poor, even. So I just gave him a reward, and then he nicks gold from me. So if you return the gold, all will be forgiven. Uh, give me some sweet gold. So the Regency has ended. We are now in control. So we're going to stop it there. And next episode, we'll start to work on taking Hollard Hall and causing trouble all over King's Landing and the Crown Land. So thank you very much for watching. I do apologise. This has been a bit of a slow and messy episode. Uh, it was always going to be that case while we wait for him to come of age. But thank you very much for watching. I hope you have enjoyed it anyway. If you have, please feel free to leave a like. It's not compulsory, but it is always appreciated. Thank you very much for watching. And I'll see you next time.